Pascal's principle. First of all, let's see what is stated in Pascal's principle. Eh? Pascal's principle states that in a confined fluid, now what is a confined fluid? Eh? Confined fluid means that uh, the fluid, fluid, okay, first of all, what is fluid? Gas and liquid, that's correct, okay? Both gas and liquids are considered fluid, eh? okay? Both gas and liquid eh, are considered fluid. So the fluid here means gas and uh, gas and liquid. Uh, then what is confined fluid? Okay, confined fluid means that the, the fluid is, is in a closed system. For example, so, so this liquid so, is uh, exposed to the air. This is the air. Okay, this liquid is exposed to the air. So is this considered confined fluid? Yes or no? Okay, this is not confined because it's open to the uh, surroundings. Uh, it's open to the surroundings. So it's not confined. Okay, but if you have a container which is a closed container, okay, the liquid is full of liquids inside. Uh, then this is a confined fluid. This is a confined fluid. Eh? The fluid cannot go outside. So this is a confined fluid. So that is a confined fluid. If it's not full, then uh, is it considered confined? No. Okay, it must be full. Eh? No air inside. Uh, then it's confined. If it's not full means there's air inside, right? Then it's not confined. Eh? So for the confined fluid, an external, externally applied pressure is transmitted uniformly in all directions. If you give it a pressure, the pressure will be transmitted uniformly in all directions. So uh, Pascal's principle is also known as the principles of transmissions of pressure in a liquid. These two actually is uh, repeating, sir. okay? So Pascal's principle is also known as the principles of transmissions of pressure in a liquid. So Pascal's principle is about transmissions of pressure. Uh, let me show you one example. Sir. We have a container, okay, and then we have a piston here, we have a piston here, and then inside here is full with liquid, okay, full with liquid. Eh? If you give it a pressure, if you give it a pressure, let's say the pressure is equal to uh, twenty thousand pascal. So, if you give a uh, twenty thousand pascals to the liquid, eh? so this twenty thousand pascal will be transmitted uniformly to all directions. Every part inside this liquid, eh? okay every part inside this liquid will experience this uh, 20,000 pascals. You give a 20,000 pascals, this 20,000 pascal will distribute it to the whole liquid. So every part inside the liquid will experience extra 20,000 pascal pressure. So that is what, uh, what is mean by Pascal's principle. Do we need to memorize the definitions or the statements of this uh, Pascal's principle? Yes, you need to memorize this. Suggest an experiment to prove Pascal's principle. Okay, so this is the experiment. So, so we have a confined fluid, and then uh, there is a few hole here. Okay, but this hole initially, this hole is covered by something. Eh? Okay, so that is a confined, right? Okay, this hole is covered by something, and then we have a piston here. When uh, you apply a pressure to this uh, fluid through the pistons, okay, then you will find that this liquid spurts out. Yeah, this liquid spurts out, and then uh, you will find that the distance, the distance uh, spurts, this liquid spurts out is the same in all directions. Let's say this is uh, it spurts out uh, five cm here, also five cm here, also five cm here, five cm. So this shows that the, the pressure is the same at every point of the liquids, eh? okay? Because the distance, how far the water spurts out is uh, proportional to the pressure. The higher the pressure, the further the water will spurt out, right? So since all spurts out in the same distance, eh? for the same distance, therefore the pressure must be the same, eh? okay? So when a plunger is pushed in, the water uh, squirts equally from all the holes. Eh? This shows that the pressure applied to the plunger has been transmitted uniformly throughout the water.